The 410 versus 12 gauge. We're talking two out of the three most popular shotgun shells in North America today on the Ammunition Guides podcast. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trello, and you're listening to the Ammunition Podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Chris, today we're going to look at two of the most popular shot shells in America. We're overlooking yep. the 20-gauge for no particular reason, instead focusing on the dainty, minuscule, sophisticated 410 uh-huh. versus the big and beefy 12. Oh, yeah. No, you're absolutely right, Dave. And of course, we love our 20 gauge. We'll get to that one soon enough. But if you need some ammo, make sure you click that link down in the description. Get your free $20 off coupon for here at ammo.com. And while you're down there, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button as well. Show us some love and down there in the comments. And yeah, we are talking two out of the three most popular shotgun shells in North America right now, the 410 and the 12. The 12 is just a ubiquitous caliber, in my opinion. It is the big honking shotgun shell that just does it all. I mean, the versatility for the 12 gauge is just off the chart. And the 410, you know, a lot smaller, but still has its uses in hunting and target shooting. The fact that police and SWAT and and our armed forces use the 12 kind of speaks to its utility for defensive applications. That said, the 410, uh, by virtue of being very small, offers something very very useful if you were to use it for self-defense. Mm-hmm. And that is incredibly low recoil, fast follow-up shots, and a very tight pattern. So you're not going to have like a big spread, but you're going to put all that force into one small area. Versus a 12, going to be a lot heavier recoil, going to be harder to get those follow-up shots on target, and a lot easier to jerk the trigger. But to be sure, 12-gauge shotguns are nearly always much heavier and more substantial, which which oh, gives yeah. them the innate ability to cancel out some of that recoil energy. That said, it's just no comparison to the 410, which uh, we were discussing is probably the ideal shotgun to introduce a younger shooter to the sport with. Absolutely great choice. If you have a young hunter or a young shooter and you want to start them off on a shotgun, 410 is always a safe bet. Very, very low recoil. It really gives them that nice shotgun experience without the punishment that the 12 gauge can put on them. Now, to that end, the, the smaller 410 bore shotgun, it's also great if you're going to be moving around a lot during your hunt, just having that much less weight reduction. When you're out there in the bush, you're going through uneven, hard terrain, a 410 is going to be a lot easier to handle. We really got to talk about the difference in power because low recoil yeah. is all well and good, but obviously it's not worth the trade off when you're talking about defending your family. A 12 gauge shot shell loaded with double lot buck can easily deliver approximately as much kinetic energy to its target as a 308 wind cartridge. And you got to consider the fact that it's going to put about eight or nine holes in a wider range of effect into its target. The 410 bore is nothing like that at all, about half ounce of shot. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, muzzle velocities that might even be subsonic. You're really looking at a shot shell that that can be weaker than a single 45 ACP cartridge. Dave, you're absolutely correct. I mean, listen, I'm not going to stand in front of either of these. But yeah, if I got to pick 12 gauge for self-defense, it's unmatched. There's really no, it's the benchmark. There's no comparison, uh, in my opinion, for the amount of power you can put down on your target. Like you were talking about kinetic energy, like at the muzzle, we're looking at something well over 2,000 foot-pounds of kinetic energy versus right around seven to 600 for the 410. So a big difference there in, in kinetic energy. We should probably touch on the fact that the, the 410 bore is kind of a, a split personality as far as what kind of ammo you can purchase for it. Yeah, there really isn't a whole lot of defense ammo out there for 410. You're going to see so many different types of ammo for 12 gauge out there. You know, you've got even now like hexagonal shot. You've got traditional lead shot. You've got steel shot for lead free areas. You've got buck shot of all different varieties. And for the 410, it's a lot less, you know, availability for different rounds. It's mostly relegated to like your target shot and your bird loads and things like that. And again, that's not to say you can't get slugs and buckshot. You can, but Mm -hmm. you're going to see so much more variety in a 12-gauge that you can really customize that ammo however you want it. There are a few specialized self-defense loads for 410. I -hmm. think Winchester Defender makes an interesting one with uh, a couple of pellets of buckshot and a couple of watch battery-shaped projectiles (laughs) that look especially harmful. 
and it's interesting because you probably never would have found 410 bore self-defense ammo before the introduction of two particular revolvers that became unusually popular recently. Yeah, that would be the Taurus Judge and the Smith & Wesson Governor, two of the most popular. But yeah, that really kind of brought the 410 back and made this a potential self-defense cartridge where, like you said, uh, a couple years prior to that, you wouldn't see hardly anything for a 410. Now it's got this really kind of aggressive image, so uh, it's neat. Uh, Chris, we should talk about the 410 bore's utility for hunting. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. at 12 gauge, it's going to do turkey. It's going to do duck. It's going to do geese. It's going to yep. do deer. Mm -hmm. uh, the 410 bore, a little bit underpowered for any of those applications. It's usually not thought of as suitable for hunting anything larger than, we might say, pheasant. Yeah, it's going to be great for pheasant and uh, you know even smaller things like you could even use it on rabbits or raccoons or mm -hmm. squirrels if you wanted to use a shotgun. That seems a bit much overkill for what a 22 lr could do, but hey, a 410 can do it if that's your bag, if that's how you want to introduce your younger hunter to hunting, or maybe you want a challenge. I mean, you can definitely pheasant hunt with a 12 gauge. There's nothing stopping you, but if you want a challenge, if if that pattern for the 12 gauge is just too big for you and you want to make it more tough, a more exciting hunt, a 410 could be a great option for you at, you know, a lot lower recoil. It's going to definitely preserve a lot of that meat. It's a great option if you're looking at like doves or, you know, other smaller birds that you want to try and preserve while you're out there hunting. Great option for you is the 410, uh, whereas the 12 gauge, you're just going to get like a puff of feathers and that's going to be it. Yeah, goodbye. Uh, as far as deer, I mean, it can be done. They make pretty effective rifled slug loads for 410 bore uh, they do. shells. And I think I would prefer an actual shotgun over the revolver. Uh, that said, I think I'd, I'd much rather do the job with a little more authority with a 12 gauge. Absolutely. When I'm going deer hunting, I'm taking my 12 gauge with you every day, all day during shotgun season. Uh, it's got the most power. You know that it's going to hit when it hits that deer, it's going to slap hard. Uh, that 410, you've got to be a lot more careful with your shot placement. It does have the power to do it, but I do know a lot of states and localities won't allow you to use a 410 for deer hunting. So make sure you're checking your local DNR website. And speaking of hard to find ammo, I don't believe in all my years I've ever encountered a steel shot 410 bore load. I don't think I've seen one either, Dave, if I'm going to be honest with you. And if you want, like I was talking about earlier, ammo availability and variety, you can find 12 gauge anywhere. Now, that being said, you should be ordering all of it here at ammo.com because we've got the best prices. And again, don't forget that $20 coupon uh, on your next order down in the description in the comment. But yeah, 410, you're going to have a hard time finding it. The 12 gauge still by far and away outstrips it in terms of ammo availability. And price, 12 gauge is even cheaper than 410, even though you've got considerably more, you know, material as far as projectiles are concerned, gunpowder, and the shell itself is bigger. We should probably say, though, if you're really looking for that low recoil experience, you can still get it from the 12 gauge. They make you some can. pretty, they can make some pretty weak loads. Uh, I think just recently we sold one by Winchester. It was, mm -hmm. it was loaded with a half ounce or seven, eight ounces a shot and subsonic muzzle velocity. So if you had to only pick one and low recoil was the most important thing to you, I still think you'd be better off favoring the 12. I, I have to stick with you on this one, Dave. There's no doubt in my mind the 12 is, is the way to go if I only had to pick one. They also have like those little mini shells. Uh, yes. For the 12 gauge that are even, you know, lower recoil than some of the low recoil stuff that are really cool. Yeah, those are really neat. The uh, Aguila and Federal mm -hmm. Premium both make what they call shorty shot shells, which are yep. one and, and three quarters inch long. And uh, low recoil aside, they're great because they effectively increase your ma your magazine capacity. It really adds a lot of versatility to your shotgun. You know, the order that you put them into the tube, if you're using a pump action or the magazine, if you're using something like a Saiga 12 gauge, the 12 gauge really gives you that versatility to do so. Now, you were talking last week about how it's almost not worth reloading 12 gauge ammo anymore. It really isn't, and that just blows my mind. As an avid reloader, you think, okay, I'm going to be able to get it under factory prices. And with metallic shells, you know, centerfire, handgun, and rifle cartridges, 99 times out of 100, that's going to be the truth. With 12 gauge, it is actually cheaper just to buy the factory ammo. And I get it for all my reloading people out there. I, I don't quite understand it either, but with a 410, uh, reloading can definitely help you save some cash because those 410 shells aren't cheap at all 
compared to the 12 gauge. And it's definitely cheaper to reload a 410 than it is to buy fresh. Yeah. Uh, frustratingly, they've become even scarcer thanks to all the judge and governor owners that are roaming the earth now. Yep, just eating that ammo supply up. And, you know, I think if uh, we're going to roll things up all together here in one, I, I, my pick is the 12 gauge, 100%. It, it's just, it does everything. You've got your low recoil rounds for training or maybe your, your doves or your pheasant shooting. You've got the high recoil stuff for turkeys and geese. And then you've got the slugs and, you know, your buckshot for deer. It just covers everything. It's one of the most versatile firearms and cartridges on earth, in my opinion. And you just can't beat it, especially with the lower price point and the amount of ammo versatility. Uh, Dave, what are your parting thoughts here? Mine are pretty much identical to yours. If you were only going to pick one shotgun, the, the versatile beloved and ubiquitous 12 gauge is really the best way to go about it. Yep. Uh, the 410 bore for what it can do out of a revolver, very, very fun to hunt up on game with a revolver. So that's a consideration. Whether you should use it for self-defense, I'm not sure it would be my my one of my top recommendations. Yeah. I, I still think you're better off with a conventional handgun like a 45 or a 9 or a 40 over a uh, revolver loaded with you know, number three buckshot. But it's fun. I'm certainly glad that the 410 exists. It's just probably not the first thing you would want. Yeah, I, that is a good thing you touched on there is the fun factor. Of course, that's always part of shooting. And the best part about shooting is actually shooting. So make sure you get all your ammo here at ammo.com. Click that link down in the description. And we'll see you out on the range.